Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lesson 7 of Knowledge 8. This one, in case you hadn't guessed, is Animals of the Fresh Water Habitat. Aha! Now, that's why when you saw... Oh, well, for those of you who saw my afternoon message, you did see uh, some effects of a beaver dam. Right? Anyway, a couple of words you need to know. One is amphibious. Amphibious means able to live both in water and on land. Uh, like a frog is amphibious. They, they live in the water and they live on the land. Another one you need to know is fresh water. That is water that's not salty. So like the ocean is not a fresh water body. And you know what gills are. Right, the parts of, parts of the body that fish and other underwater animals use to breathe. Right, you've seen gills before. Okay. So uh, one of the reasons that we we know these words is because we have um, lived near a lake all our lives. Right? Anyway, um, today you're going to learn about uh, freshwater habitat. It uh, doesn't have very much salt in it at all. It's often water that people can drink. And uh, one of the reasons that uh, the oceans are salty is because all of the lakes and rivers carry the little tiny bit of salt that they have in them to the ocean. But the ocean doesn't empty out like a lake does. So the ocean is the place where all the salt ends up. Anyhow, going to see a couple of different kinds of freshwater habitats like rivers, streams, lakes, and ponds. Um, you know some of the biggest lakes in the world are right here in the United States, the Great Lakes, and we live right next to one of the most beautiful lakes in the country, Lake Champlain. That's a freshwater lake. Okay, so we're going to be learning a lot more about this. And uh, <clears throat> my friend, you know, the, 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 the rat, the rodent. Yes, well, the rodent is with me and the rodent is going to take us into the uh, lesson, okay? Mr. Hoops, Mr. Hoops. Where? Oh no, oh no. The... Goodbye. Oh well, yes, I, I got stuff to eat and oh, 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 oh hello. Hello again. Glad you could join me. I thought we needed a real change. Well, not quite like this kind of change, but... Oh, the kind of change we needed was... I, I, I've come off dry land to a place where it's wet all the time. A lake. A lake is an area of water that is surrounded by land. There's a lot of water in the world. In fact, water covers most of the Earth's surface. But only a tiny part of the world's water is fresh water the kind of water you and I can drink because it has very little salt in it. Fresh water is found in streams, rivers, lakes, and ponds. The water in these streams, rivers, lakes, and ponds comes from rain and from melting ice and snow. Isn't it amazing to think that the water from the drinking fountain at school or from the faucets in your house all comes from rain? I'm here at the water's edge, or where the water and the land meet, to explore this lake and the plants and animals that call this freshwater habitat home. Freshwater habitats have many kinds of fish, birds, insects, and other animals. Standing here, I can see an enormous, very big, an enormous leaf in the water. Let me climb onto it so we can get a closer look. Hold on. This is a water lily leaf. A water lily is a plant that lives in water near the edges of ponds and lakes. Plants are important in freshwater habitats because they make oxygen for animals to breathe. Plants are also food for the animals to eat, and they can provide shelter to protect animals from their predators. Remember, a predator is an animal that hunts other animals. The leaves of the water lily are very large, round, and green, and they float on the surface of the water. The water lily is well adapted for living in this habitat. Like the kapok tree in the rainforest, 
The lily's large leaves let it get as much sunlight as it needs for food and energy. Lilies are also food for many animals. Believe it or not, animals like deer, porcupines, beavers, and turtles all eat the leaves, whereas ducks and geese like to eat the roots. Some animals, like fish and frogs, use the lily leaves as hiding places, and the flowers bring bees and other insects. I am going to float around the edge of the lake on this water lily leaf, but I'm going to have to leave soon because this pesky turtle will not leave my leaf alone. Mm, I've pushed out from the edge of the lake a little, and already I can see another kind of plant that lives here. It's called a, a cattail, and it gets its name from the unusual way it looks. Thankfully for me, it doesn't have much to do with real cats. Cattails have long, thin stems with foot-long furry flowery spikes at the top that turn from green in the early summer to brown in the fall. The flower spike feels soft and furry and looks a little like a cat's tail, but I think it looks more like a hot dog. The plants can reach up to nine feet in height, which lets them get as much sunlight as they need. As with water lilies, some animals use cattails for food and shelter. Muskrats and geese like to eat the roots of the cattail, and the juicy green shoots are a favorite of moose and elk. Many kinds of birds make their homes among the cattails. It's very hard to see anything in there because the cattails grow so thickly, so it's a good place for birds to build nests and lay and hatch their eggs. Predators like snakes and frogs also live among the cattails and search for animals like birds and insects for food. I think I'm going to move on now. As you know, I'm not very good with snakes. Come with me beneath the water and let's take a look at what's under there. Here are some nice looking rainbow trout. Fish can only live in water and they breathe underwater using gills on the sides of their bodies. Gills take in oxygen from the water around them. Fish have strong tails that they use for swimming and fins that they use for steering and balance. The rainbow trout is a carnivore. Remember, a carnivore is an animal that eats other animals. It eats other water animals like insects, other fish, and sometimes shellfish. It even eats some small land animals like mice if it gets the chance. So I'm sure it wouldn't mind a nibble of rat. Rainbow trout like to live in rivers, but some prefer the deeper water of big lakes. Blah. I enjoyed exploring the, beneath the surface of the water and now I'm getting to ready to rest on a lily pad again. While I'm drying off a bit, let me show you a kind of frog called a bullfrog that I can see sitting at the water's edge. Frogs are amphibious, which means they live both in water and on land. Bullfrogs are the largest kind of frog found in North America, and they can grow more than half a foot long and weigh more than a pound. That's a really big frog. The bullfrog gets its name from the loud cow-like noise it makes. Woo, woo, woo. I bet birds and turtles would be pretty surprised to know that a frog can make such a loud sound. Pretty neat, huh? This bullfrog is resting now, but it will come out to hunt when it gets dark. Bullfrogs eat a lot of different kinds of food. They are carnivores, so they eat small fish, snakes, birds, and insects like this dragonfly that's buzzing about my head. Adult dragonflies are flying insects with long bodies and wings. Dragonflies live around lakes, streams, and other freshwater habitats because they lay their eggs in water. Adult dragonflies eat other insects like mosquitoes, flies, and bees. The dragonfly uses its long wings to hover around in the air. They stay in one place while flying, that means where it catches its food. It has to be careful because the bullfrog isn't the only one that likes to eat dragonflies. Birds and turtles like to eat them, too. The water is getting a little rough out here. Ah, -ha! that's why. That's why. Here come some birds that like to eat insects. These are a kind of duck called mallards. Ducks are birds and can live both in and out of water but it's the water where they spend most of their lives. Like all birds, ducks, like these mallards, are covered in feathers. Did you know that ducks' feathers are waterproof? 
Ducks rub special oil from their tails all over their feathers. Because oil and water don't mix, the water drips right off the ducks without getting their feathers wet. Isn't that neat? Ducks float on the surface of the water and have large webbed feet to help them paddle. They dip their heads under the water and use their beaks, which are called bills, to search for food at the bottom of the lake. And here the word bills means the duck's beaks, not something that comes in the mail that nobody wants to open. Mallards eat grasses and seeds from plants and small animals like insects, worms, snails, frogs, and small fish. Well, we've had a good look around this freshwater habitat, but I have to get off this lily leaf and, and see if I could find Mr. Hoops again before these ducks knock me off this lily leaf. There's, there's another kind of water habitat, and, and we're going to have a look at it next time if I ever get picked up. I hope you'll join me. Now, if, if you'll excuse me, I, I have to f start my long trip back to shore. Oh, Rattenborough. He's, I see him over there swimming back. He saw me. I wasn't going to pick him up at the same place for crying out loud. I, I told him I would meet him over here. Oh, well. Let me get back to this. Um, uh, fresh water. Is there more fresh water or salt water on the earth? Yes, there's way more salt water. That's what the oceans are made out of. As a matter of fact, a very small amount of water on this planet is actually water that we can drink. Most of it is salt water. Now, what are some um, animals that live in a freshwater habitat. Yep, fish, so rainbow trout, um, <clears throat> birds, ducks, insects, dragonflies, bees, mosquitoes, flies, frogs, bullfrogs, deer, porcupines, beavers, turtles, muskrats, geese. Yep, and um, dragonflies. Hey, I have a question for you. Can dragonflies sting no, they can't, but they sure look scary. <laughs> Always be nice to dragonflies because they eat tons of mosquitoes. Okay, so we've had uh, a nice introduction to the freshwater habitat. And if a lot of those animals look familiar, it's because you live near a freshwater habitat. And so this is what we know, okay? If you lived in Arizona, this would all be new to you. Um... There's a word that we should go over before I leave you, and the word is float, like the lily leaves float on the surface of the water. I think you know the word float means it stays on top of the water, so we'll just leave that. And I will see you in our next adventure, and I will leave you to guess what that's going to be.